Mikili, where my Mikili Blue was born. 15 years ago. Well, season has started and I want to welcome you to our 15th film in our series Pattern of the Month. And today I'm going to tie a big fly. I'm going to tie uh, one of my favorite flies for dusk and dark. I'm going to tie the Mickey Blue. And uh, Mickey Blue is, it's got a, quite a nice story behind it actually. Uh, and I'm not going to sit here and tell long stories, but uh, we were on the Mickey, me and Hokan. And I caught first one and then I caught another fish and Hokan was in the boat. And um, I said to Hokan, your turn. And he said, I don't have my rod here. And I said, you go with my rod. You can use my rod if I can pick the fly. And I picked a really big Mickey Blue, 20 centimeters. Hokan started fishing and he hooked into a fish. And the funny thing with the story is that I'm a right hind winder. Hokan winds left and this fish took off uh, from down <laughs> through Mickley and through the faster water and Hokan hurts his finger badly. But he landed on the Mickley Blue, the first fish on the Mickley Blue uh, and it turned out to be, if I remember right, it was 14.8 kilos, like 30, what, three, four, four pounds? Really nice fish and a good story with a good friend and uh, a very good fly was born, the Mickey Blue. I'm going to tie it the classic style, meaning I will do it uh, with the huckle down and uh, a wing that will divide the huckles. Uh, so let's start tying. Okay, and uh, today I'm going to use... Uh, a black medium and a magenta extra small and I'm gonna use our cutter and now for all of you I'm very sorry I've been teasing you with the cutter but now we have a date it will be here arriving here what they say is at least is the 20th of June so just in a few weeks time we will have the cutter and the rest of our tools uh, okay, so I start by cutting this and, and uh, doing a big fly, I use a little longer tubing than I do normally. But remember, I want to have the hook in the center, meaning that even if I'm going to do a really big fly, I don't use that much tubing. This is four centimeters. Uh, I cut it a little bit and I put on the extra small the magenta one and I make sure that the the extra small goes quite far into the medium one um, and then today I'm gonna do a black thread most of you tie all your flies with black thread I don't I tie a lot of flies with white thread and 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 our stealth thread. I'm going to do the 12 hole and I start by securing the two tubes together. Maybe you saw that I cut it at an angle first so the medium can hold the extra small. Uh, big advantage with our fits tubing is that it's flexible and I work my thread back and I uh, use Mirage and Mirage on black goes a bit green which uh, I think it's uh, really really nice. Walk it back and take the Mirage and wind it back until I have like about half a centimeter four to six mil turn and tie it in and uh, as you can see what I do when I tie, I try to tie in all materials underneath. It's just a habit I have and here it doesn't really matter, but when it comes to wings and hackles, it's quite important. Okay, I like a bit fluorescent and uh, uh, today I'm gonna use Crafts Fur again. Uh, still 
I only have samples on our tail fiber. Hopefully it will be with you for this coming tying season. Uh, Kratzfer is good because it's got quite a bit of volume and it's easy to taper. And I take it and I pull it down a bit on the sides. Make sure I have some crafts for going front so I can have crafts for under all of the back part of the body. Move back the thread C so I go down to where I have the mirage. Then I taper this. I want it quite long and I walk, work the scissor in underneath and I taper and uh, Craftsfer is really easy to work with quite a big tail but it's gonna be on a big fly so okay so time for first part of the body and uh, I'm gonna divide this in a, a little different way try to show you uh, a little bit different technique in every film. Uh, here I'm going to work with a Mickley Blue hollow braid and a silver hollow braid. And uh, our braids are fantastic. I always start by tying in the part that I'm going to have as a ribbing. So here I start by tying in uh, the Mickley Blue one. And on top of that, again underneath, I tie in the silver or the hollow silver. Work the thread back and then I walk, work this down so I get a, a bit even part to be under the silver part of the body. Tie this in, make sure I back down so I cover up the thread and I pull it. And here I pull and uh, tie them in a tapered way so I got an, get a nice even quite fat silver body and here I can do at least half of the body and again tie it in underneath. And a good thing with, with the braid is not only that it's strong, it's that you can really uh, strong that way, but it's really good. You can pull it down and it will flatten out. Okay, first part. That was too long. Then I'm going to do this a bit different. Uh, so I'm going to start with a body hackle over the half, the, the rear half of the fly. And uh, since this is a big fly, for being this far back, I use quite a big feather. Strip it off, tie it in underneath. Got a little bit of uh, crafts for here, I'll take away. And I pull it out and I tie in one turn first and then over a tinsel body when I have half a body like this I do three turns and you can see I end up underneath meaning uh, here we go where meaning that this will meet the braid and then I spin the braid and you spin it as tight as you want to make the right appearance on the sides of the fly you're going to tie. Meaning I spin it harder on a small fly and not as hard on a big fly like this. So I get a little wider ribbing. Okay, and then I'll take this away and I just fold this back. And on a night fly, one of the most important things is to get a really good silhouette. And what I did with the Mickey to, to get the fat silhouette is that I divided the wings. So I'm going to tie in one wing here now at the middle part of the body. And I use a quite fat wing of any good soft hair. 
and uh, here we go and I treat it the same way as I always do uh, our brush is magical when it's come to sorting out hair you see this looks it looks pretty nice but when you pull it over like this it will untangle and it will be a lot better for tying in too even moving up my fingers pulling out a few strands tapering so I get a nice taper with few strands in the tip here and then I tie this in and remember now this is an underwing meaning it needs to be about half the length of the wing and I look at this this will add a lot of volume to the fly make sure I use my thumbnail press this down on the sides the fish will see the fly from underneath meaning the wider it is the better silhouette we get cutting this normally I can cut this like this but I cut wings like this at this angle because if I do that I get some strands to be longer than than the other so it's much easier to make this just disappear into the body okay there we go so now we're gonna put on some flash and uh, um, you could of course put some flash underneath this first wing too but uh, where are we we uh, I'm gonna use uh, our flash boo and I'm gonna put it here on top here now and uh, on the smaller ones I use our angel hair HD and when it comes to our flash I use the Mickey blue color there are strands I told you before but these very thin strands and you should take those away and the key to this flash is how soft the, the the fibers are and to make them move it's not possible to make it without having these small uh, synthetic strands oops and you have to take those away and then I take this and I put it in wide that was not good hold it about one centimeter between my fingers put it in wide tie it in there's one and uh, double back get one that is a bit tricky here and then I'll do the same as before I work in with my scissor and I taper so I get uneven length look from the behind make sure it's wide like this so you get the right appearance glitz I use a lot of glitz uh, a lot less of our regular dubbing I like glitz because it's got a long fiber and it's easy to brush out and the whole idea behind the uh, uh, dubbing body is to get a lot of translucence uh, volume of course but translucent and I hold back the wing back down the dubbing and I build this up and um, here you can't be shy really need to do this heavy and normally a dubbing body should look overdressed before it's brushed if it looks okay meaning it will look too sparse or too thin when you have uh, brushed it out and I want the long strands to mix with my hackle fibers so I tie this in make sure it's quite fat here in the front hold back go down with the thread onto the medium tubing 
I have like three or four millimeters of medium tubing there um, to build the wings and the hackles on to make it a strong fly as possible. Okay, uh, so time for uh, the next hackle and I do a quite much bigger hackle. And uh, strip it off and tie it in like before. Make sure you do it on the medium. And you have to pull the thread a bit here. If you work with such a big feather uh, with a stiff part here. Okay, and I tie this in and I start by doing the same. I do one turn and then I do three turns over the body and I make sure to pull it down in the dubbing really, really hard. And I meet up and I pick up the same ribbing I had that I folded back and I spin it and I cross over meaning that even if the feather breaks uh, the fly won't be disappeared uh, dis destroyed if the hackle fiber breaks it will just be held by this uh, uh, very strong ribbing anyway okay a bit messy here but and I cut this off and I fold this back instead of cutting I fold it back tie it in and cut it off and I work with my scissor away from the thread like this I'm not cutting like this it's always a a risk that I'm gonna cut off my tying thread. Okay, take the meanest brush in the world and hold back the wing just to uh, hold it away from the brush and torture this fly. If you've done it right, it can take this beating and you can see how the brush will pick up the fibers and pull them out to mix together with the hackle fibers and I brush it down a little bit and um, looks I think it's good I have a few fibers that's been coming down here I'll take those away since I have no glue yet it's easy to just take away I want to use half the diameter not more Okay, so I'll take a few more fibers of flash, uh, a little longer, and uh, take away the strands. And tie them in. And these, since they are long, they will uh, move good in the water and I double them. Here we go. Like that and taper. If they're too long, I can always fix this afterwards. And the reason I use this color, the Mickey Blue color, is that this color, uh, the purple from magenta to over the purple color is what stay longest when the light disappears. So if I want this flight to have some color to it, to fish in the dusk, I should use this, uh, this uh, range of colors. Okay, so time for next uh, little wing. And we'll see what I'm going to take. I think I'll keep on with this and uh, I need to have a long part and uh, this is going to be like the main wing so it means it's going to be quite um, fat and I pull it down and I always cut close to uh, the hair when I cut it, cut it away from 
from the skin uh, so I can work with as long hair as possible. And on this now, this is going to be second wing and in total it's going to be three. And I brush it and you see what's happening. It really opens up really nicely. And uh, doing this, I can move my fingers. Now I saw this that, that this is already good tapered and I can put it on, look how long I want it. And you can see how fat this is turning. And it looks really nice. And I tie it in. And here I can use quite a bit of thread and make sure to use the stretch, stretch of the thread to stretch out the thread and it's the stretch that will hold the material. That's why it's useless to have this non-stretchable carbon threads. Uh, okay, and I cut off and uh, since I'm gonna do this classic style, I need to be quite a bit quite careful when I take away everything so I don't have too much in the front here. There we go. And uh, I do uh, a little bit of uh, angel hair. And I uh, keep on working with the meekly blue colors and uh, why I do that, I already told you. And uh, maybe 10 fibers. And I try to divide it a little bit. I have to be a bit careful here. So I tie them in wide. And I double back. All of them, please. I always complain when I tie here because I don't see as good as you do. Okay, and then I take a little bit of glue here. And I just put a drop of glue, you support and put the drop of glue right on where I secure this wing. And this will uh, turn this part from being uh, the weakest to be the strongest part of the fly. Uh, okay, so I have one more wing to go, but uh, since I tie with a half turbo, I want to do as much as possible before I put the, uh, the last wing on. So what I'm going to do now uh, is that I will tie in the jungle cocks before the, the wing is really ready. And um, <clears throat> I have a really fancy version of this fly with double jungle cocks. Uh, and you know, the fish don't care. I think it's pretty nice. I'm going to do that now, meaning that I take a fiber feather that is really long and it should be at least as long as the tubing, preferable a bit longer. And I tie it in. Make sure I form it a little bit before I tie it in over my fingernail. And, um, you know, I always use uh, legal feathers. Cytus is always with me. And uh, it's important. And then I'll take this, form it over, over my thumbnail. Make sure it's about the same length. Look from above. And tie this in. And since I want you to have focus, I can't really uh, turn this because we're not going to go back on focus. Does it look good? I think it looks okay. Maybe it should be down a little bit. Okay, and I tie this off. Then I do uh, one more and uh, I do a smaller feather. Uh, and here I curve it like this on my thumbnail first and then the other way and I put this on about half the length and uh, is it possible to catch fish without jungle cocks and uh, 
I normally say for me no because I don't fish much without them we are soon to launch our own jungle cock substitute and um, hopefully you will like it them as good as I am I'm not gonna show you yet I'm gonna wait a little bit <clears throat> and you will see they are a lot softer than all the other materials uh, all the other substitutes to uh, make the wing move and then I put this in and it can be a bit tricky to have this be right on top of the other one and maybe I'll have to adjust it but uh, I think that looks okay this is a little bit moving on my side here but looks okay anyway uh, so now always cut off of course now I'm gonna do the hackle and uh, here I tie this fly with uh, a lot of different hackles on the really big ones uh, I do um, Ostrich, but today I'm gonna use a schlapp and feather or a big hackle feather. Uh, you can use uh, pheasant rump feathers too. Um, pheasant rump is actually a product that we will soon have to sell. I'm gonna wait to show you that uh, until we have them. But uh, I take this and I make sure how much I need. I want quite a lot of hackle. And um, the hackle here should, of course, give some motion, but the hackle should also give volume to the fly. And I tie this in, quite stiff and difficult one, and I double, meaning all the fibers should come one side of the feather. And you can see how long fibers I chosen on this one and I tie them close to each other. Of course, you can use the plier here. I think it's easier actually to do this with your fingers. And I end up by tying in underneath. Some of these feathers is a bit greasy, meaning the fibers will stick together. You can wash them before you tie them in but you can also let the pool wash them when you fish them look at the fibers see how it looks this was a bit greasy but i think it looks okay and uh, i just hold this down a little bit like this i can put one turn on where I pick up the fibers and go down on the plastic like that to get more of the <coughs> fibers um, underneath the fly since I do the classic style. Okay, time for the last wing. I do uh, a, a hair that is longer and also this is a bit straighter. I normally don't like the straight uh, hair uh, except for what I do on my uh, summarize but on this one I think on top like this it will be quite okay few fibers long pull it, putting them in make sure they are now so long so they really do a nice taper like that And I tie it in and I think it looks okay here I can hold this and I can take these fibers and I pull them up and press them back like this before I tie them before I cut them off and that makes it easier to get very little material here because I work with the half turbo cone and the half turbo here we got some hairs that are sticking out a little bit the half turbo doesn't have that much space 
So that's why I have to think about this. Okay, and then instead of the nasty rusty that I normally do with peacock, I'm gonna just do a few very long Mickey blue angel hair on top. And I do one or two turns and I fold them back and tie in. Uh, then I'm gonna do peacock and uh, I can do uh, black or I can do uh, the purple one. I had some really long purple here. So let's try this. And um, this is more for the fly tire than for any, anything else. But uh, it's fairly nice. It's nice to have a good looking fly. See how long they are. They won't be as long as the wing, I think. Because I'm up to what about 20 centimeter fly here and I divide this between my fingers try not to make them cross over come on now see these were a little bit I'm trying to hold them right in the in the end because I want them to be as long as possible. And I try to tie this in at the same time, trying to use the full length of these fibers. And I tie them in. Hopefully I have them even like that. Looks pretty good actually. Very often I have to take away one or two of these and tie them in again. Cut off and clean up. Does it look good? Yeah, I think it looks okay. Fairly big fly. Where are we longest? Maybe not 20, but 18 centimeters. Okay, so now it's only cone left. Organizer, I haven't talked about the organizers for some time. They are uh, fantastic, I think. Keep good order in all my cones. I used a uh, metallic mickey blue purple uh, color and I just put it on the extra small. Do a little bit of um, glue here. Always support. Put a little glue on. And then when I pull this down, I pull it down as tight as possible. Don't need the thread, don't need to cut too close. Pull it down and the best way to pull this is actually to do it with the fly out the device. And you pull down the cone so there's no thread seen above the uh, above the cone. The, the thread is what makes the fly uh, be destroyed. And then I uh, put the scissor on, use support a little bit longer here, maybe almost four millimeters. And where's my purple lighter? No purple lighter here. I'll, uh, what do I have? I can't do uh, Mickey Blue with an orange here. Loda helps me purple a bit purple on this purple fly needs a purple light there okay hold it up melt it down a little bit at a time let the excess come down and secure that cone in a way that you still will have a very very good hole um, okay mickey blue Big fly, few strands that are moving here, but it doesn't really matter. But you can see how I created this very fat, but tapered wing uh, by the different length uh, of the different wings. Quite a big hackle here. And um, did it turn out good? I think it turned out pretty good. 
Okay, so let's talk a little bit before we end this. Um, talk a little bit on size supplies. And you know, size is one of the most important things. And um, when it comes to size, there are different things that will decide what size of fly you're gonna fish. But listen, how can uh, the same fish take these two super different flies? Uh, and there's a bit of tradition. One river fishes small flies, one river fishes bigger flies, and some rivers you fish really big flies. But the fish are the same, or almost the same. I think actually this is more tradition than reality what works. I think that is the conditions, it's the color of the water, temperature, and all these things that decides what you're gonna fish. In a way, I've proven it by taking big fish on tiny flies on the Elta, and I also taken fish on big flies on the D in Scotland, where the tradition is this, and on the Alta, the tradition is this. So, um, fill up your boxes and make sure you have a, lot, a big variety of sizes. Size is important. And uh, the Mickey Blue, like I tied here, is one of my favorite big fish, big flies. I uh, use it uh, especially in, in the dark. Uh, it's not a fly that I use that much when uh, there, are, there is uh, the demand of a big fly when it comes to, to dirty water and so on. It's more a night fly. And um, actually I can say to all of you Norwegians watching this, I've heard is um, it's the favorite fly of the King of Norway. And actually I met him last year. We were fishing the same time on the Alta and uh, now the year before last year. And I gave him some Mikkelis to fish in Mikkeli on the Alta. Okay, so... Um, Thank you for watching this and I must also say thank you guys subscribing to our fly packs and to our material packs uh, that are already sent out when we uh, are uh, filming this and I hope you liked it and uh, next month we're going to do a different fly. Next month we will be in the middle of the Scandinavian season. This is a big fly for the, it's for the night, but also for the start of the season or the, 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 the pre-season um, conditions. Uh, well, I think that was all. Myself, I'm gonna go fishing. I hope you are too. And I hope you enjoyed the big fly, Mickey Blue. One of my favorites. So, thank you very much.